Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we saw an ad for that new McDonald's remix menu and for the first time ever had zero interest in trying any new menu items. Am I maturing? Nah, that can't be it. So until we see something we like on the menu, let's sit down and watch Sebastian playing as the Mayans in red take on Hera playing as the Malay in blue. Now, while the players heard their hurdles, explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to feudal age ASAP. Will he see the sheep? Ooh, just barely misses it. Why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup we are going to be watching today? The Mayans are a civilization that pushes its players towards archer units. Their skirmishers can be upgraded to throw a second, albeit weaker, projectile, and their foot archers, except for those skirmishers I just mentioned, become progressively cheaper as the game goes on all the way up to 30% cheaper in Imperial Age, which does help them mass their unique unit, the Plumed Archer. This is the fastest foot archer in the game, and one that comes with a small attack bonus against infantry. Now, to support your ranged units against the enemy, Mayan walls are 50% cheaper, buy one, get one free, so archers can stay safe behind a lot of these, and if you want to go the more eagle-ish route, well, Mayan Eagle Warriors can be upgraded to get a massive plus 40 added to their HP. Now, to produce as large an army as possible, Mayan resources do last 15% longer, and they start the game, if you caught it early on, with an extra villager, but 50 less food, which does help them reach feudal maybe a little bit faster so they can start taking advantage of those cheaper archer units, but unfortunately does mean that the Mayans start the game housed, which is why you'll see Sebastian, you will have seen, if you notice Sebastian researching Loom at the top left of our screen before he trained a villager, Get that out of the way, build your houses, and then start ramping up villager production is the name of the game for the Mayans. For now, the name of the game is pull the boar, push the deer, get the sheep, and basically eat your way through the Dark Age, eat your feelings, and hit feudal. <laughs> let's take a look. Speaking of uh, hitting the next age, let's take a look at the Malay, a naval civilization, but one that comes with a few late game land features that are incredibly powerful. To start with, their battle elephants become progressively cheaper, starting in Castle Age, 30% off, then 40% off in Imperial. They get all infantry armor upgrades for free, so when Hera goes up to the next stage, you'll see where my mouse is at the top left, top right, rather, of your screen. These three boxes, if we're lucky enough to see Imperial, will light up automatically. Their militia line units can be upgraded to cost no gold, only food, which, when combined with the supplies upgrades, gives them a pretty good 65 food two-handed swordman trash unit because the Malay do not get champions. Now, lastly, to help you raid your opponent, maybe do a little bit of damage on the move, well, the Malay can turn to their unique unit, the Karambit Warrior. This is an incredibly cheap, super fast, but overall kind of weak infantry unit that does only take up half a population space. So if you got a hundred of them, it only takes up 50 population room. Now, in order to help you get these late game features and upgrades as fast as possible, the Malay do advance to the next age 66% faster than normal, which means you can either rush up to the next age, or if you prefer, work on your economy for a while, take a smoke break, go for a little bit of a walk, enjoy the scenery here on Arabia, very, very lush and green scenery as it is, and then go up to the next age, catch up to your opponents fairly quickly. Those are the two civilizations, both players sitting at 17 villagers a pop, a few more queued up for both players. As they, again, continue to eat their way through the Dark Age, a good time for us to take a look at their bases as Hera discovers the first base we're going to be looking at, which is the Mayan base. Primary gold off to the side, not on the attack path. Primary stone as well, although a little bit more exposed out in the open compared to the gold, which is protected by these three forests i'm gonna say sebastian's got four forests nearby one two three four we'll see if Hera has four as well that'll kind of clue us in usually there's a good amount of symmetry in these maps primary gold not primary excuse me secondary gold off to the back tertiary gold and secondary stone a little bit exposed a little bit outside of the safety of the wall off that sebastian's already creating but on the whole the southern southwestern portion of the base pretty closed off eastern portion pretty darn open unfortunately for sebastian and let me zoom out the eastern portion is literally a direct line of attack for Hera. so sebastian realizing that has he by the way discovered Hera's base yes he has and he is attacking it already realizing that he has created a wall off of palisades houses and a barracks 
Let's pivot and see what's going on here at Hera's base as these militias try to bust their way in. Get this one unfortunate, rather, I guess there are two? Where's the second one? Oh, they stacked one on top of the other. Trying to get into here, trying to get these uh, berry pickers. Primary gold also off to the side, although a little bit more exposed than Sebastian's. Primary stone to the back. And then a few more resources to the left. A few more patches of gold, very exposed in the forward position. Hera's base also one, two, three, four forests. But like Sebastian, the portion of his base facing his enemy completely open. And that's it. Hera's had enough. He doesn't want to waste time repairing, wasting wood, repairing these palisades. So he deletes them, escapes. Sebastian loses interest. Like a toddler seeing a new toy, a new shiny toy pivots to the wood line. But Hera already has that walled off. And now Hera's back to the berries. He's back. He's in feudal. He's building an archery range. Still a minute away from the next age is our Mayan, who went up off the back of two extra villagers. So Hera here, not only did he save the 50 seconds for the villager training time, but remember the Malay do go up to the next age much quicker than their opponents, 78 seconds instead of the 130 that Sebastian has to wait. So it's going to be a while before Sebastian hits the next age, which will give Hera an opportunity to, to do what? Big question mark. He's training an archer. Sebastian still hasn't left. Hera is returning to the... Okay, I was going to say other side of the map, but it looks like he's returning to the center of the map. One of the berry pickers gets caught out, builds a house. Not too sure why. House gets destroyed. Hera does any of these. He's got 23 population space that he can uh, work with for now. And yet again, finds himself under threat, but with an archer out. If he can neutralize the eagle with its two pierce armor, these m militias are going to... I, I stumbled at Militia because my eyes were looking here at the Men-at-Arms upgrade as they become Men-at-Arms. As long as the Archer can deal with that Eagle, the Men-at-Arms are probably going to be as impotent as you can imagine with a wall-off and ranged units. Any more Archers yet? Yeah, just started training a second one. But Sebastian's not leaving. And they just discovered that there's a gap between this house and the archery range. Okay. On his part, what is Hera doing? He has seen the rear of Sebastian's base is now discovering that it is walled off. Hasn't really seen this part yet. So both players kind of circling, kind of not. Let's see if they start banking any kind of resources. Hera is now ahead one or two villagers, having hit feudal a little bit earlier than his opponent. Let's see what they plan on doing here. These are not very big feudal age armies. Although Sebastian is going up to eight army count. Hera is going up to four. And yeah, okay, so Hera's starting to bank food. Sebastian's starting to bank gold. We'll see if they try to rush into Castle Age. We'll see if they try to take some kind of engagement here for now. Sebastian is the one moving forward. Scout is going to see these reinforcing units. Yeah, he catches just the tip of the skirmisher here. Can't stop. There is a spearman hot on his tail. Sebastian's, uh, rather, Hera's adding a few skirmishers of his own. Sees the spearman, of course. Might as well get them. They cost no gold. A little bit of freezer, a little bit of food, a little bit of wood. Not the end of the world. Hera is already up to 300 food. Sebastian is not... Okay, so Sebastian isn't going up to castle anytime soon. He's down to 40 food. And every ounce of gold he's gay, he has in food, every morsel of food, is going to training eagles and skirmishers. Are we finally going to have the first kill of the game here? As the players continue to circle around each other. Man-at-arms very slowly moves forward. He's going to enter into the dead space of the skirmisher. Hera continues to repair. Not not the best thing to, to have to do, to be honest. You, you waste a villager's gathering. He's not gathering anything. On top of that, he is wasting resources repairing. I say wasting. I should be, should be saying spending resources. Okay, th definitely we're going to have a first kill here. It is a Hera who guns down a skirmisher and a man-at-arms who gets... Draws first blood, but loses one of his archers in exchange. He's not careful. Okay, never mind. The archer's HP is pretty darn good. And Hera kills five units to the one of his opponent, handily taking that battle. Lots and lots of hills and high ground, low ground. Advantages, disadvantages everywhere. Hera's army is smaller in terms of the totality, but in terms of what we've got right in front of us, his army's much bigger than his opponent, and he's got two archers on the high ground. He went after the man-at-arms first. I wonder if he should have gone after the eagle. Doesn't really matter. Eagle dies, having accomplished very little. 
Okay, so now the players are trading out. Hera is banking 550 food, 200 gold. So we know what his plan is. If he can keep just defending for a little bit, he is training more skirmishers, more archers. Where is your... Okay. I was going to say secondary structure, but here it is underneath my very nose, the, the blacksmith. And I see a big blue square. Looks like possibly a market. Yeah. What else could it be? What else could it be that size at this stage of the game? If not a market. 12 kills to 8. So Sebastian has evened up a little bit. Better than 5 to 1, 12 to 8. And disengages. Now he's banking a good amount of food, but Hera is already just... As I start this sentence, there we go. Hits the 800 food count, clicks up to Castle Age, and needs a minute 36 seconds instead of the two minutes. What is it? Two minutes and 40 seconds that everyone else needs. So a full over a minute advantage, I think. Just over a minute. Quicker going up time. So Sebastian's in a bit of trouble. He still needs about 200 food. Now, the good news for him, he is the one putting on the aggression. So... Even if he takes a little bit... Okay, never mind. He uh, <laughs> he goes up to Castle right now, but he's still a uh, minute 50 seconds behind his opponent. As long as he can keep the aggression on this side of the map, Hera won't be able to really use his Castle Age earlier uptime advantage besides maybe upgrading these units. You know, getting... Uh, I'm assuming the second he hits Castle, he's going to get Bodkin because he's gone full Archer, and then he'll decide if he wants to go Skirmishers or Crossbows. Okay, so a minute 50 seconds is what Sebastian has to uh, work with here. As long as he can keep Hera on this side of the map, like I said, basically no real advantage to Hera for hitting the next age unless he starts plopping down town centers, which he's not. He's instead going up to 500 stone. Are we going to get to see Karambit play? Bodkin, there's Bodkin. Okay. <laughs> At least I can call it one thing right in this game. 550 stone. No second town center at all for our Malay. Sebastian has killed a minute. He has 50 seconds left to kill. The more he can keep pressuring, the better for him. Because back at home, he is down three villagers. Army counts are identical. Now they disengage, but not for long. Look at the HP on these units, though. Holy shit. One, two, three, four of them are basically dead. But does he care? He's done it 20 seconds away from Castle Age himself. Hera with a very secretive, very defensive middle of his town center town settlement castle here that his opponent has no clue is going up siege workshop okay so he's expecting ranged play out of our malay and our malay may <laughs> sides completely sideswipe him with karambits oh he's definitely getting karambits if he's getting squires and elite skirmisher okay so forget the crossbows says our malay I'm just going to go with Skirmishers. And now we've got the One Eagle who still this continues to poke in because Hera never plugged the gap, and now he does. There we go. Now he's going to get to see the castle. What a brilliant, brilliant maneuver by our Mayan to run into this town center. He's not going to live very long, this Eagle, especially now with the Karambit chasing. I think the Karambit's faster than the Eagle at this point. He's not going to live very long, but man, oh man, did he get some amazing scouting done with this one eagle he saw. And now Harris surprises his advantage is gone. An immediate defensive castle. Hmm, what's this location? So Sebastian, I guess, doesn't want to build it outside of his town settlement because he doesn't want to have to defend it. He's got a big wall off here, a bit of a weak spot here with these palisades. Second town center very far off course. Has Harry even seen... Hera, I mean, Hera's seen that there's gold here. But the plumed archers, remember, they come with an attack bonus against infantry. So if we're going to get to see plumed archers, the Karamits might be in a bit of trouble. Their HP is already pretty damn bad. And so if you start mixing in any units that have any, any kind of bonus against that, it is bad news bears. Elite skirmishers taking on regular skirmishers. Elite skirmishers, I should say, with the high ground taking on regular skirmishers, but the regular skirmishers have done their job. They have kept Hera glued to this one area as the Mangonel crept forward and finally manages to start getting some kills. How does his house up? What is going on? 
Somebody recently in the comments asked me why I keep saying it's a bad thing to have resources on elevation. And this is exactly it. They're like, is this walled off or not? It's impossible to tell. The aesthetics of the game are such that anything on a hill always kind of messes with your eyes. Huang in it is our Malay Hera as he brings forward a villager to build a siege workshop. Okay, Karambit's attack. Karambit's get shoot away. Manganels. This is a defender's wet dream right now to be stuck behind a whole bunch of thick, juicy houses with a pair of Manganels. Plumed archers on the way. Five of them. Ooh, but they're, uh... They're gathering outside the town center. Ooh, Hera, Hera, Hera. He says, you know what? Has he actually seen... Yeah, he's seen the siege workshop. Says, I'm going to nullify this. If that Manganel disappears, then all of a sudden my skirmishers are going to be able to rock around, roam freely. So he's going to... Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Is he bringing any villagers forward? No, I guess he decided to just forgo that castle entirely. Instead, he's exploring this area with his archers who may or may not discover that there's a castle here. Manganel wake up. Takes a few shots. Archers escaped unharmed. Not so the Karambits. It looks like four of them did die here. Hera's army count 29 to 14. And now he's in. Let's see what kind of damage our Malay can do here. There is a town center to the north. There is a castle to the west. Castle, which by the way has... Oh, okay. The archers finally do die to the... It looks like the plumed. He still hasn't seen the castle as Hera. Now he's trying to get vision doing what that eagle warrior did to his base. What are you? Oh, look at the trail of dust as the plumes run forward. And Hera's base, by the way, is open. Okay. And uh, <laughs> they set themselves up at the worst possible location. And now they're going to start wreaking havoc. Hera has nothing here to defend against this except Karambit's infantry plus one. Okay, but he's not paying attention to Sebastian. Now he is. What a fun unit. How, how much fun are plumed archers to watch? Now he can't escape here, by the way, because that eagle revealed it, that there is a gap. So Hera plugged the gap. What he didn't plug up is this big gaping chasm here. We'll see how he handles those plumed archers. As the castle, forget this high hill location, placed right in the face of our Mayan base. Oh no, Kar Karambits. Karambits are going to start running amok here if he can't get the plumed archer numbers back up. It looks like the plumed archers are still in the rear of Hera's base. But now there's a bit of a dead zone that our Mayan can't really operate in. Skirmishers move forward. Oh, fantastic. Manganel shot. Oh, if Hera's not careful, does split them at the last second. The Manganel shot, despite that first really good one, the next three were terrible. And down goes the Manganel. Down goes the villager repairing the Manganel. Random Karambit is, for some reason, allowed to run free here. Town Center. Okay, Town Center does get him. Our Mayan, who's going archer units, does not have ballistics yet. Does he even have a university? No, he does not. What he has is a second defensive castle going up. So, he has secured his gold. He has secured the gold here as well, and the stone. So even though this one patch of stone that we saw was exposed on the attack path is being taken by Hera, our Mayan still is able to mine here. He has 227 left, so not enough for another castle. But let's see if Sebastian makes an issue of these stone miners taking his primary stone. Oh, they are missing. This should clue him in that he needs to get freaking ballistics. Both players heading up to Imperial. Of course, our Malay will hit it first. Good attack round to zone out the archers, but in they move. These are the fastest moving foot archers in the game. And so attack rounds are going to have to be very on point here for our Malay, whose two mangonels like great white sharks are hunting, circling, looking for some kind of damage. The plumes looked like they weren't all killed. Some of them were killed, but the rest escaped. Six, three villager kills, three military kills. And now Sebastian's going to keep running around. He's going to keep trying to get bait out some more shots. Where is Hera's villager going? I love watching Manganel taking on... Manganel's taking on archers because it really does showcase whether the archer player knows the timing of the Manganel. Now, these guys attack on a six-second delay. 
So whenever they, that, that's why after, oh, oh, they take a shot to the face. After that first volley, Sebastian felt comfortable enough to stick around, shoot two arrows or two rounds of arrows at the villager and then split up his units because he knew there was a six second delay. And by the way, one of the other cool features of the plume archers is their HP. Not only their attack is pretty low, but their movement speed and their HP is the, I guess, the two big selling points, if I can put it like that. Looks like even more of them are back. They brought some of those feudal age skirmishers along for the ride. Can't really enter into that town center area anymore because of this castle, not with the units, uh, not with those skirmishers and some of those plumes. Also, their HP is absolutely terrible. Hera first to Imperial, Hera first to pop out a Treb. There's a second one on the way as well. Both players now have ballistics, a contingent of plumes joining. This is a lot of plumed archers. 16 of them can absolutely overwhelm this position. Oh, that's why you have to have those amazing attack rounds. Three dead immediately, but both players are now in Imperial Trebbing. No, not out of here. Treb being trained on the in the left castle, which is housing seven plumed archers. Hera interestingly going after the town center. Trying to cripple, I guess, the economy of his opponent versus the actual castle. I guess he realizes with one trebuchet, one this castle on the high ground is gonna need to take an absolute pounding. Karambas trying to get the Manganel. They fail. And uh oh, now all of a sudden this Treb's in trouble. Second volley will go off. These are not Cataparudo Trebs that unpack and pack four times faster. Down goes Hera's first Treb. Blooms do die. A pair of them. Actually, three of them as the castle fires. And now all of a sudden, wait a second. Hera's Trebs are in trouble. And Hera's army count is all skirmisher. Which should do quite well against the Plumes, but not against the Manganel. That's... Why, why are you all the way back here? <laughs> Second trap pops out for here. He's got a third one training as well. Back home, he's still just on one town center. He's getting chemistry now. What are the plumed archer upgrades? So they are fully upgraded attack-wise. Armor, they're still severely lacking. And they are not yet elite. And now another mangonel will fall? Uh, another trebuchet will fall? No, maybe not. Hera's villagers are escaping. They should be repairing. Hera's castle goes down, and his forward position has now been breached. Should he have gone for that town center, or should he have gone for that castle? I mean, he's knocked his opponent down to one town center, but that's because our mine had three. His OG town center is gone, the other town center is gone. He's ahead 25 villagers. Hera off the back of only one town center has been focusing so much on military, so many expensive units coming out of that castle, and by that I mean trebuchets. There's a lot of villagers retreating here. Conscription for our Mayan. What? Scale mail armor? Okay. Uh, is he expecting elephants out of uh, our Malay? Who is taking the high ground with his skirmishers? This treb has been left behind. You are on cleanup duty, says Sebastian, as he pushes forward with three more trebs. And Hera's kind of fighting a tactical retreat. Not too sure why he's waiting so long to retreat with these Trebs. Just right-click them all the way back home. And he is fighting a rear action here with 14 skirmishers, but there's a Mangonel. I'm surprised our Mayan is stuck on only one Mangonel. This is not really a very scary force out of the Mayan, with the exception of the Trebs, who are going to get, catch wind of this Siege Workshop with their incredible line of sight. And before it can even go up, three Fiery Balls get launched and down goes the siege workshop and we're seeing eagle warriors okay that's certainly a way to deal with mass skirmisher karambits must come with an attack bonus against eagles right yeah plus two every uh everyone does manganel finally does fall but now there's four eagle warriors on the field so this is going to be an interesting uh battle here because Hera has the numbers and he has a very similar army i like that sebastian left one treb to die to delay Hera's advance while he takes care of that one treb so both players are going to have a melee unit melee infantry unit and a ranged unit unfortunately for Hera, the mayan units are just a lot better let's compare them side by side 
Actually, you know, <laughs> the, I didn't realize the Eagle Warrior attacked on a base of a seven. Oh, but in three, two, one, these are going to be elite base of a nine. Okay, now for sure he has the better unit. Double the HP. No base armor of any kind. He reveals them, by the way. Harris sees them. So on the one hand, you have plumes and eagles against skirmishers and karambits. And you've got a whole bunch of eagles. Now, they have got zero attack upgrades, but that doesn't matter. They're taking on skirmishers. You don't need attack upgrades. The armor is what you need to save yourself from these fiery javelins. And our Mayan feels comfortable enough. Now he's moving forward. What an absolute uh, back and forth game here. Here is bringing a Bombard Cannon as well. He does like to mix it up with those more mobile units, but the Eagles have closed. We'll see how well the Karambits do. Hera literally has 15 more army supply, but like I said, it's Karambits and the Karambits melt! Holy shit, they just completely disappeared off the face of the earth! And now Hera's in an absolute disastrous situation. He's down almost 30 villagers. Army supply is identical, but now more than half his army is skirmishers. And as much as they start picking off these balloon dodgers, which are, by the way, dodging. Look at this. Look at Sebastian. This is like when you're uh, when you're watching StarCraft in the uh, stalker dance of the Protoss and Hera's army. Yeah. I mean, that was just an absolute... The last three, four minutes have just been an absolute slaughter fest by our Mayan, who's transitioned into eagles. Timely. Very, very timely. And look at that armor. Eight pierce armor against your skirmisher that attacks on a seven. So there you go. That's all you needed to know about that battle. Like I said, uh, uh, an interesting symmetry in that both of them are going quick moving. Actually, what is that? I think the Eagle is the same speed now, right? 1.3, 1.32. So the Karambit is still a little bit quicker uh, than this Eagle Warrior. Did he not? Uh, did our Mayan not get Squires? For his eagles i feel like this should be faster i feel like this should be a 1.43 instead of that in any event like i said a very cute symmetry between the armies one melee infantry one ranged one melee infantry one range but man oh man is the mayan army just so much better and even the the, the karambits that tried to close in on the uh eagles man did they melt because of that plumed archer's bonus of plus one I mean, they attack on a nine, the, the four armor, or rather five armor of the Karambit reduces that to a four damage. And then you add the bonus of five, but they still only have 30 HP. If they had 60 HP, maybe they do a little bit of a better job. But if they had 60 HP, they wouldn't be Karambits and they wouldn't be, you know, the unit that they are that we love and cherish. But ultimately, the Mayan just produces an army similar but better then the melee and overruns and Hera loses something like 40 units in the last minute alone. Tries to close on the in on the plume. The plumes do a fancy little dance, a little stalker dance here for us. That was cute to watch as the Eagles closed in and absolutely destroyed them. 61 plumes, 75 Kramitz. This would have been a fun battle to see, although I suspect the... Uh, Actually, you know what? I suspect maybe even the if the Karambits could close on the plumes, maybe they could do some serious damage. But by the time 75 closed on 61, I mean, 15, 20% of them would be dead. Peak APM for our Sebastian, our Red Mayan, right at the end of the game. Peak APM for Hera also towards the end of the game. So both of them really investing in that micro of uh, last battle. I think the <laughs> I think the dancing here was the PK, peak APM for Sebastian, if I had to guess. Let's take a look at the economy. Yeah, Hera was down about 30%, just under 30%. He did get more food and stone, but wood and gold, 3,000. This is serious. This is a huge deficit here. This is like 7,000 extra gold. No relics for anybody. No conversions. 14 buildings destroyed by our Malay. Six destroyed by our Mayan. Total kill count, 154 to 104. And was I... I think I, I mean I don't want to bog everyone down here by looking for supply, uh, squires. But I, no, I don't see squires. I see the full armor upgrades. I see forging. He wouldn't have gotten squires before. Oh no! Oh, that's Hera getting squires. Okay, <laughs> never mind. So in any event, even though the eagle was not fully maxed out, he still proved to be the superior unit attacking on a ten, attacking against this Karambit that had a plus two bonus against him. But it didn't matter. Our Mayan just survived. 
the brutal assault. Hera brought Hera really brought the pressure here with a castle, a siege workshop. He busted his way. Look at how many buildings are destroyed. All this dead grass, all of that. Two town centers, but ultimately he just couldn't get the finishing blow and he couldn't get that critical, critical damage done because the Mayan, he expanded north and he expanded south. So if Hera wanted to attack this, he would have needed two hubs, two attack hubs. He only had one. And so he had to choose with his treb. Do I go north or south? He chose north, gunned down the town center first, left the castle up, which meant more plumes. This castle was left. This area was left. And so Sebastian doing an amazing job defusing his base. Hera doing a great job trying to attack into the center. But ultimately, he was repelled. How many villager kills? Not the end of the day, 14 to 5. And ultimately, the Mayan does get 50% more kills. And with the, like I said, similar but better army, it is Sebastian who takes the last few engagements and with it steamrolls completely over the Malay army. The Malay army, which, by the way, for the longest time, that was on one town center. I see a second one up. But for the longest time, Hera was just on one town center, which means he is down about 50% in terms of villager count. And so having lost his entire army, he knows he just can't replenish it enough. He knows he can't really work with the villager count that he has, the resources that are left, and the encroaching, impending doom that is the red Mayan. He taps out, lives to fight another day, and it is Sebastian, our Mayan in red, who is victorious, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.